Man on the street today. I'm in South Salem, New York, at St. Paul's Chapel with the Bouchard Brothers. We're going to discuss 1975's double live album, On Your Feet or On Your Knees, today. Hey guys, 1975. You're a pretty new band. You're like a cult act at that a cult act at that point. And uh, what made you guys put out a double live album? It was a uh, sort of a uh, a tribute to our fans and uh, so they could have something to take home that reminded them of our crazy high energy loud show that we did uh, now I so I as I remember it we the people that were saying you know you guys sound better live than you do on your records. Right. We sounded much more... To capture the energy. You know, a lot, of, a lot of bands, they couldn't even match the records. With. They'd go out and they couldn't reproduce it. We didn't even try to reproduce it. We tried to, it, you know, go better than the record. And, and I think that, that was one of the things. The other thing, and correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't that right when Peter Frampton's Frampton Comes Alive yeah, came out? Yeah, about that time. And that was a huge seller for Columbia. And so they were like, you guys got to do a live album. That was the yeah. other thing. And we're like, okay, if we could sell like Peter Franklin. A little souvenir of the tour. Yeah, it was a souvenir of the tour. It was a good price, double album. Uh, it was definitely the party album of the year. Yeah. I heard it because I just moved into Maspeth at the time, Queens, and they had alleyways. And there was a, for all intents and purposes, a gang, a motorcycle club called the Moon Pub Boys. <laughs> who all had this funny insignia painted on their back of their jacket. Oh, oh wow. And uh, I would hear it every night. I would hear yeah. Yeah. Hot Rails to Hell, Cities on Flame, yeah. and my favorite, Astronomy, oh. which constantly, until the new album came out and changed everything, because <laughs> the next album would move you up to the next bracket. It was the, our first gold record. Okay, so we, it was our first really successful you know, they. I think that Columbia probably lost money. You know, we were unrecouped until until on your feet or on. Oh, when, when that yeah. came out. Okay. Yeah, when that came out, it was the first time we it's said, a, "Maybe hey, there's something here." Yeah, we could we could. Uh, and and you know, I mean, it was it was just dumb luck that Donald wrote Reaper right after right that. After that, yeah, it was like okay, we're. But that, a it's a position. nice collection of your first three albums. It's a nice, like, so it's sort of a souvenir of it. It's, yeah. It wraps yeah. up everything very tight, and then you're on to the next phase of the band. Right. I know, but you know what? Uh, doing this, you know, I'm revisiting all those songs in my latest thing. We'll talk about that later. But but one of the things that uh, I, I thought was odd was that we did such a great live version of Quicklime Girl, and it wasn't on there. Yeah, there was a lot of good stuff that you know. Yeah, yeah that we did. It, we did go exist. for we did go for the energy though. I yeah. think uh, I, I yeah I I can remember playing that. I don't remember playing things that fast and that loud <laughs> and that continuously. Pretty much the only time yeah. you guys slow up on that album was last yeah. days of May. Yeah, right. that's yeah. true. Then you, last days yeah, of May. That's the only time the breaks come on a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, it's yeah, full speed yeah. ahead. <laughs> full speed ahead. <laughs> I got some questions from the guys at Morning Final. Okay, just okay. sure. Just to throw some of these on here. Art Tanel, Tanel says, Why does Subhuman start it off instead of Harvester of Eyes, which has the great Scott Muti intro? Why was it flipped mm -hmm. around? The second song has the intro of the band. On. Well, Subhuman, that, that's a tremendous version of, of the, the song, Subhuman. Yeah, I think that we were so happy that we, and it, it sounded rich and yeah. full of basses. We were, we were very disappointed with the uh, Secret Trees version. That oh, was one okay. of the things that, you know, we were like, you know. We can do better than We that. can do better. That was, that was really, it was like, because we really spent a lot of time making that. We, we did, we, we actually made that record in a church, Secret Trees. Secret Trees. Yeah. In the city. It was that 30th Yeah, Studio yeah. C, where they did all the symphonies. 
They did all the jazz recordings. Yeah, uh, Miles Davis. Miles Davis, yeah, Dave Brubeck. Yeah. Um, all done in that beautiful, beautiful uh, studio. Room. Room. Yeah, yeah. Well, which yeah. was a church. Yeah, and so we, they mixed it while we were out on, on the road. So, you know, we, we heard the mixes are like, yeah, oh, it's pretty, you know, astronomy, telepaths, those are so great, but subhuman, it was like, sounds like you put a blank over the whole thing. You know? yeah. So we were very disappointed. So I think the fact that we redeemed that song, yeah. you know, on the live record, we were so happy and proud of it that we we're like, over. yeah, <laughs> check this out. Yeah. <laughs> you think you liked this before? <laughs> now, Alan Wise asked if you guys were disappointed with the mix of the live album at the time. Well, that was mixed by Jack Douglas. Yeah, so we were so not disappointed. We were delighted by the mix. It was great to have Jack on board. He, you know, responsible for all those great Aerosmith albums. Cheap Trick. Uh, Cheap yeah. Trick and Aerosmith. And yep. Yeah, so he was great. And and uh, we we actually, uh, they they wanted to mix it. We're like, after Secret Treaties, we're like, no. <laughs> you can produce it, but don't mix it. mix it. Hire somebody else. <laughs> and they're like, who? Jack Douglas. Oh, okay, okay. We we get Jack. So yeah, that's what happened. that they was that was a lot of good people. Yeah, yeah, that was great. And last is Todd Ellenberg. He wants to know if there are still any tapes around for expanded versions of the whole show that would mirror like that sequencing of an entire concert mm. that you could put out. That the all of those tapes, I I believe, were stored at uh, what's that called? That I place in Black Mountain. Black Wack. Oh, Black yeah, Mountain, yeah. I don't know. In California, I think. Well, the one that, not the one I want fire, right? No. No, I don't no, think no. So. No, that was in a, uh, in a sound stage, I believe. Yeah. No, I think they, they, they still have them. They probably do. Probably I mean, do. I know that uh, from Imaginos on, all of those tapes were um, being held by Sandy Perlman. Okay. And they are in a storage facility. In, San Francisco right now, so. But the earlier ones, I think it's Columbia still has it. Cover. Did you guys yes. have anything to do with picking it, or did, nope. how did no. it come about? This was a surprise for us. The Columbia Art Department created it. Created it. Yeah. Got the limousine to park out in front of. I couldn't get one tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. okay. They made That's up the okay. little, little but, flag. Uh, they certainly had a, a great imagination, and uh, I love the the way it was, uh, you know, put together. Yeah, they put the, the the dark sky. The dark sky, and yeah. that. It doesn't you know, look like moody. that today. It's yeah, after, after, beautiful. I have to say, I'm a, a former Walter boy. I love this album cover as a kid. It <laughs> resonated big So with were me. we. Yes, I got a little bit of some old time memories here for you. This okay. is Rolling Stones. Oh yeah, Dead. and we what do you think? Uh, did. Yeah. It says the live gospel, according to BOC. <laughs> I think they went maybe went a little too far. Now this is where you guys told Sandy no more S and M stuff yeah, after yeah, these ads, yeah. correct? Because the yes. next ad is simply oh. black. Oh, black. Hey. And yeah, this yeah. is for it's your King Biscuit Blacker. Flower Hour. Yeah. This is another one that says, you know, it's a whole thing. It says uh, this is the fourth great live album in rock history. Wow. Mm. We got so, it. Yeah, these were some great ads back then. Yeah. 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 Rolling Stone loved you guys. And that's that's not Photoshop. No, that's they had to somebody yeah. had to carve that. There you go. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea? Murray's or her or Sandy's? That's I would say Sandy. Murray. No, Murray. I would we'll blame I would, I would we'll that on Murray. Murray's, Murray's idea was having the book open. Like you the, know, with a like in the back cover. That was, that like was Murray Krugman's idea. That was the idea. Yeah, with the gloves and... I gotcha. Yeah. But the inside is nice too. The inside is the five guitars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which anybody saw you guys live which back is, then, you know what this is. Oh, a line of amplifiers, yeah. which is turned into a, you know, a, uh, a something you'll see in videos a lot. And this is the Brooklyn Paramount Theater. That's where it was? Yeah, that's the Brooklyn Paramount, this famous proscenium art stage, and of course all the the followers of the cult in the front right. row. And, uh, and, and we did these individually in yeah. the Columbia Art Studio. Yeah. 
and then they composited it all together. But you know, they really they really worked hard on it. And they when they got a theme in mind, and they would definitely yeah work. It. I would say that the album cover was one of the factors. The, the album cover and the sound were the two big factors that made that go gold for us. Yeah, this yeah. was a definitely a highlight of the 70s. Yeah. yeah. It definitely was. Now, um, I have a little bit of a grab bag section here. Okay. For you guys. Let's see what we got. Ready for anything? Yeah. I'm gonna, I first, think. I'm gonna go over this gentleman here. There's a bunch of different things. This man is Martin Popoff. Yes. Mm. And he has written many books about you yeah, guys. Yeah. Oh, yes. Secret and this is the book that I was reading when I found out that Joe had never been to the church. When I got the yeah. idea, a couple, let me call, yeah. get some phone calls in and see if yeah, we can yeah. get to the church. Yeah. But this piece is... Uh, yeah, yeah, that is great. Yeah, he yeah, really that's did a great, great job on this. Yeah. This is a picture book. Uh, yeah, it's a coffee table book. Yeah, a yeah, coffee table book. Picture yeah. history. Lots of great photos. But this book is the one I wanted to bring up. Yes, there. I'm reading this yeah. right this now. This is it's amazing. Just, yeah. It's the works of Imaginos. Yeah. And Albert is solo albums and uh, touch on all of these. Reimaginos and yeah. the next album. Right. But what the work he put in on these. That's it, it's pretty wild because uh, when you read Martin's yeah, well, books. This, yeah. this is his first. When you yeah. read his books, he, he, he doesn't actually write a whole lot. He, it's, he takes an interview from here, and he takes an article from Rolling Stone, and he puts it all together into something that's readable. And it's a big catalog of but the, stuff that you could the, find. Uh, that, uh, that Imaginos book, he's actually, he, he, he has taken flights of fancy about this whole thing, and, and he's done also a lot of uh, work historical him. research to, to like sort of back up that this story could have possibly happened. happened. Yeah. He did an amazing artwork for it too, pencil drawings. I, oh yeah, I, yeah. I, I got a few yeah. sent me. Yeah, he yeah, said, he, I saw the book uh, when I first started doing Reimaginos. He sent it to me, he said, I hear you're doing it. He you wanted know, maybe, it to come yeah, 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 maybe yeah. this could be, you know, help you, you know, you know, formulate your ideas about this stuff. And and I think it, it was helpful. So, but I saw it before, I read it all before, so. And I was like, oh, really, you know? and. You know all of this. You know all of these uh, occult yeah, things. He was definitely in, in deep. Yeah. On, this, on the whole story concept. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the years, correct? Yeah. It, it, well, it, and a lot of it, you know, because the the first, the first act of Imaginos, it takes all place in the 19th century, so it doesn't make it to the 20th. And that'll be the second act. Yeah, the second act is uh, the 20th century, and then. The, then the last act is going to be the twenty, the twenty-first century. Although, yeah, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it yet, but I have an idea. And that's coming. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, next in the grab bag, I have. Oh my God. Some after Blue Oyster Cult, you guys went here. Joe taught for a while. So did yeah. Albert. I mean, you guys did your own thing. The first thing I think Joe did was. Dead Ringer. Dead right. Ringer. Dead Ringer. Now, would you like to explain what that well, is? I, I couldn't um, find the album. I had it. I only had the cassette. This, this was this was Neil Smith. Smith's idea. That's who it is. Okay. Who was the original drummer with Alice Cooper? Very flamboyant, and uh, I rehearsed at his house for decades. <laughs> no, we we did a lot of rehearsals, and then we put together this super group with uh, Charlie Hume, who. Ted played with Ted Nugent, and uh, he's now with uh, uh, Fockett, singer with Fockett. Very good, very good. And uh, you play keyboards. Dan yeah, keyboards and some guitar. And uh, J. Je Jess J. Jesse Johnson on guitar. Uh, it, you know, I, I wasn't sure if I really wanted to do this, but Neil said, go ahead, do it. And uh, Is that where you started working with Dennis? Albert's got a song on here. Yeah. Oh, you would yeah. uh, from the yeah. brain surgery. Yeah. 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 Well, before the brain surgery. Okay. You know, yeah, it's we just written early on, early yeah. on, yeah. and a song I wrote with uh, with uh, for Blue Oyster Cult. I think in, is on here. Uh, Double talk. Oh, yeah, that was uh, that Helen was demoed Wheels. by was it Helen Wheels? Uh, yeah. Neil, actually was Neil's Neil. idea. Oh. Neil's idea. Yeah. So that that was a it was fun. No, you met Dennis and and you you knew. Yeah, from Dennis the and Neil from the, from our earliest tour, our earliest successful tour was with Alice Cooper, 
and um, and uh, I know it's been said a lot, but they they encouraged us to uh, you know be different. Yeah, because they were yourself. certainly different. So and different, and and great. because before we yeah. toured with them, all the people around us, you know, all our girlfriends and you know managers and everybody were saying, you know, you've got to be more like you know what's popular now. That was the that was the kind of prevailing thing. So we were kind of torn because when we were before we even were signed, we were like, if it sounded like something you heard before, it's out. <laughs> it had to be completely it had to be totally different. new. Something totally brand new. new. Yes. Totally a, reinventing. New. Yeah. Not a, we're reinventing something to replace the wheel. <laughs> so, like ten years later, Joe, you pop up with Dennis Dunaway and. Uh, and yeah. Neil Smith. Neil Smith again. Richard Dunway Smith. Now, Power this, Trio. Power was Trio. Was this the precursor to what would come later on uh, called Blue Coop? Ten years after yeah. this? Yeah. I would say this is uh, exactly Maybe. because uh, when I, I would go and see them play and I was jealous. Yeah. I have a weird question. <laughs> I was when jealous. I, I was like, I want to play with Dennis Dunway. When I saw them at BB <laughs> King's, which there was a ticket right here, in 2005, wow. you were there at that show. And Joe yeah. was talking to me, and yeah. I saw you walk in, and I was like, "Is that?" Is, and yeah. was that the beginning of you starting to take Neil's place? Because that's what no, no, me, no, that's what it happened. never. No, I think uh, yeah. uh, that group kind of yeah, Neil dissolved. Neil decided he didn't really want to yeah. perform that much. Tour. Right, he doesn't like uh, going out yeah. unless it's a special event. Right. So the, bra the brain surgeons were like a group that played fifty shows and practiced once. Right. We have Richard right Dunway and Smith. We we have fifty practices in one, one show. show. <laughs> Brain so, surgeons brings me to this. Yes. Okay. Here is a oh my god. Your oh work, my god. complete work of your brain surgeons. Oh, what wow. is your favorite Did you know that work? Was, uh, so <laughs> these these are all good ones. This is a compilation. That's a, that's yeah, that's like a great best of the French label yeah. did it, and they uh, that's pretty good actually. I like that a lot. This was the first one. This one, we weren't really a band. I, I had uh, Hirschberg playing uh, saxophone and, uh, and uh, a friend of mine played bass, but I played almost everything on there. So, and this Ooh, was really, so well. this, was, uh, this was the first one, so it, it uh, eponymous. And it, it was a lot of songs that I wrote for Blue Oyster Cult that they didn't want to do. So, so that and, I, I, and there was a guy, who was a big fan of mine, and, and we corresponded, and he said, it, it's, it's jazzy, it's rap, it's, it sounds like jazz rap with horns and keyboards, and it sucks. <laughs> oh, I love it. I, I, I like the bracelet. And I'm like, huh? What? I'm trying to do something different here. <laughs> Just like in the early days. Yep. Yep. So uh, uh, this is our second record, and this was good. We had a real band. We didn't really do it in a real studio. We did it in Pete's garage, so uh, it didn't have that great sound. Uh, and then, um, and this one was when uh, after Billy Hilfiger got it, you know, his diagnosis of a brain brain tumor. So uh, this was kind of a weird. You know, we had so many songs that we'd, we'd done, and, and I really wanted to use uh, Billy and Pete's, uh, you know, artistic vision, you know, more in that thing. So mm -hmm. this was this was the swan song for... For the, the band. Actually. For the band, really. The, the band, the original band. Uh, so, so this one was the first one we did in a real studio. We had Paul Special mixing it and, uh, and recording it, and that... I really like this one. This one Lots sounds, of house. Yeah, yeah. That's one of my favorites. This one was one I made in my living room, and uh, this is just a weird album, but I like it because it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so I would have to, I, and this one is the best album. This that's album, it. See, that, I was going to go with that one myself. That's, this is the best album. It, it that has, has Ross the Boss on it. Yeah. And, yeah. So, and that was all, down to a four piece all of that. a sudden we had, you know, some real fire, yeah. you know, not just, uh, um, you know, guitar wise, but uh, also as a writer, you know, he, he helped a lot with the arrangements and the writing. But so they, that's they, my favorite. Right they're there. much different than your latter day releases. 
They really oh, are. Yeah. Good well, these but are. That was a group effort, and these yeah. were your solo albums. Yeah. So the okay, I talk about the solo albums. Yeah. This is my first solo record. This is a record where I played all the instruments. I mixed it, and the only thing I didn't do was master it. And I and uh, and the art teacher in my school took the pictures. Well, except for that one I took, and uh, so this was one. This was truly a solo record. Okay, so you do everything. Don't you? Yeah, and I will never do it again. <laughs> that, I thought I was losing my ever-loving mind oh, boy. because uh, you know I just couldn't. You know I kept playing. You know I'd send the mixes to Joe, and oh, come on, tell me what you think. <laughs> I was so needy. <laughs> tell me, Joe, what? <laughs> But this one, this one, so this one uh, is uh, where I had a bunch of people helping me out. So this is, this is, a, you know, my best solo record until it's only my second one. Though. So the <laughs> third, one, one, third one is better than that one. So now that Joe's solo. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Joe has put out quite a few solo albums too. Yeah. Joe, would you like to look through well, what is your favorite? Well, almost as many as the brain surgeons. Uh, yeah, well, this inspired me. He was doing brain surgeons albums, and I said, well, heck, I got to do mine, and, uh, and they're all good. this was the first one. Jukebox in my head. I got the drummer from Leonard Skinner to play drums on it, Mr. Uh, Michael Cardelloni. Cardelloni. Yep. I mean, I did some acoustic stuff that doesn't have any drums on it, but um, that, that was a good, a lot of fun um, for my first effort, and uh, I think the second one was this one, the island. Tales from the Island, a lot of songs from my friend John Cook, the late John Cook. The late John, very good. And an amazing songwriter, uh, lots of songs on here, but I, I had a lot of fun doing this, just a lot of variety. You miss working with him? Oh, John? Yeah. Well, he was just, he, you know, he, he wasn't was, a collaborator. Yeah, he, he, he was a, he was a lonely, yeah. okay. a lonely songwriter singing on his porch yeah. up on the islands. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, had some great pictures. we miss him terribly, but songs. but we didn't really work with him. Okay. Yeah, we, we more or less, you know, he he would give us he would play stuff. Actually, he didn't even want anybody. Joe had to trick him. I had to trick him into even getting one of his songs because I had known him for all my life. You know, since I was a little baby. Yeah, yeah. Or you since were I was a one, little baby, a toddler, year. and uh, he was our next door neighbor, and then he played guitar, and he, you know, and he was like the cool guy. Yeah. The cool yeah. guy who knew all the folk records. Yeah. And blues. He turned us on to Bob Dylan. Yeah. So, but he's got. He was also a, a graphic artist, tremendous artist, and uh, so his songs sort of reflect that visual, you know, great. You know, things that he wanted. Lots of good stuff. Perpetrator. Yeah. Wildlands. Thousand Midnights. What year was this, too? Oh, uh, that was, was after that. Was it about three years after that? 2012. Yeah. Then this was the third. This was done in a hurry. Uh, I wish I spent more time on this one. In fact, it started out as an EP. I put it out as an EP. Nobody knew what an EP was. You know, fans like you, yeah, yeah, you got you got to have that whole album. So then I expanded it. I, I expanded it with three more songs and called it a, a regular thing. And um, more John Cook songs on here. Lots lots of good stuff, but not enough of it. We're a little thin. Um, solid black. Yep. And then after that. Um, Power of music. Power, music. Power yeah. music. This uh, I started getting a little bit more consistent. Uh, the, there's a cover of Career of Evil, which is a song that Albert wrote with Patti Smith. That was a title of uh, a book by J.K. Rowling. She, you, oh. the, you know, the oh, she's <laughs> got, it got all the stuff. <laughs> I have the book. We have, like, I want we, to know what you guys are, thought about it. You know. <laughs> Mostly, Blue Oyster Cult has been ignored <laughs> by popular culture. But this is uh, Robert Galbraith, which is the same as J.K. Rowling. Rowling. And so she put this out. It's actually a murder mystery. Yes, it is. And yeah. every chapter is a Blue Oyster Cult title. Uh, it, it was just Yeah, or sometimes so like, uh, there was uh, one chapter that's 
uh, it's, uh, this is how one chapter has it had it's not the title from uh, uh, Girl That Loved Me Blind, but it has some lines from the, the oh, lyric. Yeah. Really and deep. Yeah, and yeah, at that, that point really deep. that song had never been released. It was it was one of these songs that was left off of the Imaginos record because, because the record company didn't So she it. really did her research yeah. in finding so much obscure Blue Oyster cult. And they made it into a, uh, a, a series yeah. in England. It's a, yeah, it's on the BBC. Sir? Yeah, I've seen it. I like it myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, so I put Career of Evil on this because I knew it was going to be a movie and uh, lots of other good stuff. Uh, I wish I had a little bit more time to get that one together. Of course, you always. Another good one. This is another good one. I started thing. writing more, getting deeper into my writing. Um, I felt it is a little more balanced than some of the others. Well, and then this one the is, is uh, probably the best yet. So hopefully, yeah. Yeah. the more I do, the better they get. Yeah, okay. yeah. This one yeah. is excellent, Joe. Yeah. Some of the, and I'm the working instrumental on, on this. So that's my sixth Racing solo. With the devil. Racing with the devil. So, so I know one time when I really wished that I didn't take so long doing a record. And that was the Imaginos record. <laughs> By the time it was ready, the first Imaginos. the first Imaginos record. By the time it was ready to come out, everybody who had signed me had gone on to other other companies or other jobs or other positions. So the people that wanted it weren't there anymore. Oh, it's and I had shame. this contract, and I time had this change. Is this this one? Yes, that one. This that one. I young. really wish I didn't take so long. This compared to this, what I you like think? your new version better. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. This to me is the the, the version. It's okay, so so that one took. Uh, this is the Blue Oyster Cult version that after seven the years, seven years uh, to make. Uh, the and budget, that took three months. Three months. Was, yeah. so you did a lot of this yourself with who? Um, two yeah, other. Yeah, no, there's, uh, there's, other there's other channels, nine other musicians right. on it, but uh, I did do uh, most of it myself. Yeah. No. Which do you feel was... Oh, reimagines. That's Thank why you. I did it, because I was exactly. so frustrated with this, Thank you, Albert, for this correcting other it. thing. <laughs> you know, it was like, well, that I was frustrated about it, and also I had made a promise to Sandy Pullman when he was, passed you, know, you know, right before he passed away. I visited him in the hospital, and I told him I was going to do it. You know, I mean, I, you know, when somebody is sick and it looks like they're going to die, you say all kinds of stuff. You know, just to, you know, and I was like, you got to get, you got to get better. You know, I sang. You got to get more songs to write. We got more, more songs. The song, we never finished it, you know. So actually, in that song that I sang to him, uh, Joe and I finished it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be on the new, that'll be on yeah, Imaginos 2, yeah. Reimaginos yep. 2. Now what's the new, the, the second Imaginos? Reimaginos 2. Reimaginos 2, two it, it's going to be called Reimaginos 2 Bombs Over Germany. So, and that's so you know, a historical centerpiece of it is, is World War II. So it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's kind of a rough thing. You know, it has a lot of dark, dark themes, but uh, you know. Darker than the first. Then the re first. Reimaginus yeah. one? Oh no, Reimaginus one is like a full break. This is like uh, horror. <laughs> the horror of the horror. war. The, the worst. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of funny stuff. Oh, but there's funny stuff. I put, uh, I, I actually have a comic relief. I put uh, David Roeder's um, Il Duce oh, on there. About Mussolini. Uh -huh. About Mussolini, okay. so, uh, it's, and it's funny. I mean, you know, if anybody has seen Hamilton, you know how King George is always the comic relief, you know, in the middle, because it, a lot of it is the serious stuff. Yes. You, you, need, you, know. you need to break it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you do. It's, it, it's too overbearing, you know. I remember telling Metallica, I said, you know, that uh, ah, that Master Puppets record, it's pretty rough. <laughs> the first song alone just takes to have Master of Puppets. <laughs> Wish uh, you'd had a program. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know, and I saw them play it live, and I'm like, you need a slow song in the middle, man, just so people can breathe. <laughs> I, I was working the Roseland when they did that, uh, the Rod Day visit. You guys were there? Yeah, yeah we I were was working security. We were up in the I balcony. was outside the sidewalk. We were in the balcony. I could only, I could only peek in. We you were guys were in the balcony. Yeah, yeah, yeah we had great the band. What did you think of uh, their version of Astronomy? Oh. That's my favorite blues. I wish they had played it that night. 
But they did. But they, they didn't. Did but but they're very well. I'm, I'll take you on my little trip with that, which is that uh, uh, Kurt Hammett called me up and said, you know, we're going to do your song. I didn't like, know that. Yeah, yeah. Kurt he called me up and said, we're going to do it on our, our new record. It's going to be all covers. I said, oh, great. You know, and uh, wow. so he said, but I hope you don't mind. We're really uh, taking liberties. I said, no, liberties? I want to hear what Metallica sounds like doing my, my thing. So when I heard it, I thought, I don't know. This isn't that different. It's oh, like okay. it was too respectful. James sounds just like Eric. I know. The first it's line. Too respectful. Is that Eric or is that James? You know. Yeah, but you guys uh, wrote a lot of that one. Did, who directed yeah, it? Well, Sandy? we co-wrote that yeah. with Sandy. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Joe started it. Yeah. And the, the 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 timeline for how it was written. I have a, a timeline in my head. He has a different one. That we had it for a couple of years. I thought it happened really fast. I, you know. Yeah, was that originally part of the Imaginos? Uh, yeah, it was. It yeah, was yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's definitely part of the Imagine yeah. uh, saga, and um, I had the lyrics and was just kind of messing around with the lyrics and went for a walk on the beach. Came back and I had this melody, the melody that James Hetfield sings. Yeah. <laughs> he, well, he changed a couple of notes actually. He he yeah, yeah. Sing. And he, he's, he, he 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 adds a few little. Sorry. Have gone away. <laughs> oh yeah, gone. Away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and so, yeah. How lucky are we? That, you know, we're just a bunch of guys that started yeah. out yeah. playing in the barn, yeah. Yeah. up on the farm. You know, you guys played and together here since we were are. Kids, we're, you know, what's that? You guys were playing together since you were yeah. kids. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We started the band in 1959, summer of '59. Joe was 10, mm -hmm. and I was. He wasn't. Hadn't turned. Uh, yeah. 11 yet, and I was 12. So I just turned 12, and uh, Well, you had a nice nice little band all the way through yeah. junior high school, high school, and we stayed together. I think you, I, I wasn't in the band at first. It was you and Eddie and Teddy, Ted, yeah. and Teddy played the drums. Was it a family type of thing? Yeah, well, our cousin. Cousins? Yeah, yeah. Cousin, cousin, neighbor. Yeah. Second cousin. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, eventually, you know, by the time we got to high school, then, then, you know, a couple, a couple years later, we added uh, Steve Malone on saxophone mm -hmm. because a lot of the songs that we played had sax, sax yeah. leads. So, you know, that was, you know, that was sixty. So when you nineteen sixty, just just thinking about that, that, you, that uh, all the all the things that have come come down the pike and the things that you're asking us Hold about. Yeah. Well, I got another. <laughs> Pop culture. What is this? The 19, I, late 70s, Marvel Comics Defender. put you guys into the Defenders comic. I it was three it. issue stands. I have it called in color. Tyranny and Mutation was the storyline. Yeah. Yeah. I had the comic somewhere. I have 3,000 of them. I couldn't dig it out. So wow. I got the, I took this one instead. Yeah. But wow. did, you knew about You didn't know about this. I, He's more of a comic guy than Yeah, I yeah. I was always into comics. Did and you know they were doing it at the time? I heard from somebody, but I, I didn't hear it directly from Marvel. So, you know, or what was that? Is that DC or Marvel? That's Marvel. Yeah. The Hulk, the Defenders. And yeah, yeah. Hey, so. when are they going to make our movie? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, you guys have been ripped up. You guys should have been in the, any Godzilla movie. You never know. Released after 1975. Oh, oh. Your song should have been in any of those Godzilla movies. And it very rarely does it show up. Yeah. Well, you know, I love, though, the one that uh, uh, Bear McCready and... Uh, the, and Serge Tech. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. I mean, people are like, sacrilege, sacrilege. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's this modern. is it's, it's great. The guy's a great singer well, and a, uh, you know comes up and, with and, and Bear McCready did the music for Outlander. So yeah. it has that kind of Buron, you know, Irish, you know, drumming in it, you know. So it's it's perfect for Godzilla. <laughs> yeah. So we got a couple of things left. <laughs> Okay. I don't know if you ever get tired of this, but do you guys ever get tired of the cowbell? The cowbell? Hey, listen, I, I you know, I, I'm playing with the dig diggers now. And, uh, and uh, I, we played a song, and, and we were playing this song that actually Andy and Joe and I wrote. And uh, it, it's supposed to have a cowbell. And they go, did you bring your cowbell? I said, no, well, maybe, you know, it was at a rehearsal place, you know. Smash Studios in uh, in Manhattan. So uh, 
I'm like, maybe we could rent it. And you're like, next time, just bring a cowbell next time. <laughs> we hired you for the cowbell, and you didn't even bring it. <laughs> Although I was talking to Corky oh, Lang a couple here. of weeks ago, yeah. Corky Lang seems to think he's the cowbell guy. Oh, well, Corky's the cowbell guy. I mean, we, we had, you know. All I know is that the was ratio Sam Mountain. didn't play Corky on TV. <laughs> 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 you had Jimmy Fallon, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, although the guy that looks like me is the lead guitar yes, player. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, it was yeah. funny enough. So, though. what did you? <laughs> he was just going to bring it up. Oh, it, was it was just oh. for you. Oh, yeah, the cowbell This story. is the guy who actually played the real cowbell, cowbell. in okay. the studio. It's been a lot of... Yeah. Rumors over the years that maybe it wasn't Albert, maybe it was Eric, maybe it was David, David Lucas. Lucas. Well, I got to the bottom of that with David Lucas. He played cowbell on Tenderloin. Oh. So and he came in after, you know, when nobody was there. And I came, I came, he, I came in the next day, he said, listen, this is what I did. And I'm like, Dave, that's great. Great, perfect. You know, this is before we did put the cowbell on Reaper. Oh, so, I'm gonna have to listen to that so, again. Because he's like, right? yeah. I, I know I played it. I, I came in after nobody was there. I said, no, that's the wrong song. That's Tenderloin, and which was the first one that had the cowbell. So wow, that song. preceded uh, the, yeah. the overdubs. You know, that was you know. I think he might have done that the same time that he recorded Randy Brecker because we weren't there, right? I was there when Randy Brecker. Oh, you were? There. Yeah. I said, David, I that's the worst thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> I said, David, no. Yeah, I, and I never, I never contradicted I mean, him because I think it's a genius. Yeah. But uh, yeah. sometimes you just get a little, right. little crazy. Yeah. Get off base, you know. Yeah. You, you know, when you're working and it's pressure, you know, you got to get the song. His song's got to be right, you know. Well, and also you, you can make mistakes. Yeah. You're creating no, things. Local horn mistake. You create things out of nothing, and but yet it's going to be what people would judge you. You know, when we're gone, when we're all gone, what are we judged by? But, but the things that we do, really, you know, whether it's. Writing a book or, or writing a song, writing or, a song or or, or 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 giving your money to charity or whatever, anything. So so you can get a little bit too wrapped up with your ego with you know writing a song like I will you know and, and but this isn't what I want to say you know and somebody else is you know especially when you're collaborating. Are you sure you want to say that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it's you know, it, it, it's quite a bit of humility that you know to be to to actually be uh, successful at doing yeah. that. Now, the first time I saw you guys was 1980, I guess, Black and Blue tour. Mm -hmm. um, Big tour. Obviously, uh, biggest a friend tour here from the church from St. Paul, sorry, Steve. So you saw him there on that Capital too. Center. Capital Center. 14. Oh wow! Wow. wow. Now Great a little place. a little after that, Albert, you uh, ceremoniously get fired from the band. Did you have any problems with your brother? Now this is going from, it wasn't like a kink situation, like, you know, Ray and Dave Davies no, don't we, speak. We you never, guys still talked after we you never, talked about uh, We never, yeah. never got in a fist fight. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> not like not, not since we were little kids, when, <laughs> when our hands were big enough to hurt anybody. Yeah. <laughs> but it was it was smooth because I know you you left under your own. Uh, it was. I didn't think it was smooth. I was. I was, was, I was. No, there were. Some I was hurt. Personal. I was really hurt. To situation be and you know, I mean, I, I was more hurt than mad because I knew, I already recognized that I had done something wrong. Yeah, but coming from a fan of the band, after that. There was something missing on these subsequent albums that were released after that. Well, there was, oh yeah, there was a three quarters of it, if, if you ask me. There was a quarter of Lewis that called missing. There was something missing in your drive, your determination, well, your your vision. There was a lot of things that I felt like you know I would keep. keep I was uh, good at, at keeping focused on what was we were trying to accomplish. I think that you know, I mean, you kind of have to be. Uh, a free spirit and let your mind wander and all of this other stuff and slightly ADD or whatever to, to create, you know, that's part of the process. But then the other part is to, you know, keep the party happening. And, and as a drummer, that's what you have to do. So I had to have that both, 
both things, whereas the other guys didn't. And you also were creating a lot of it, though. You love it. I, I don't know if like... I was so much creating. I think I was, I was guiding it a lot. I think I was, I was a little bossy. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was bossy, and and you know, I know that Joe felt like that I was uh, maybe uh, quelling some of what he yes. wanted to do. Because what yeah. I liked about you guys as a kid, you were like the hard rock eagles. Every one of you sang, you all had your songs on the album, so you each took a turn. Joe did a, like Hot Rails, right from the big opening, where you get Hot Rails to Hell. Yeah. And you guys well, we've been writing up. songs, you Cities know, on separately and together when we were in, right. the, in high school. You so know, to so me, that, that always just worked. So, it. That's so, what I liked and when I, you know, when I met Don Roser, he'd, he'd never written a song. Eric, Eric hadn't really written any songs until I met him. <laughs> and uh, Alan did. Alan yeah. had songs. Alan, well, after yeah. he leaves the band, did you have a tough time getting your voice across on the on stuff? Maybe that was true. That was because I could feel say like that. They, they didn't yeah. use you like they should have because it was. It looked like the right. It looked like two oysters. It was hard. Back. It was hard to get my songs. Right. On there was records. a power grab, and and Joe and Alan were the losers. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. so. But but. What do you think Such of the new life. thing that they just put out last year? The symbol remains because the, 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 the title alone comes from Shadow of California, which Joe had a hand in writing. They did back that in. Did that's a lot. Well, that's really that's, that's, that's that Sandy Perlman yeah. lyric. Who now? You was that the one you wrote with Neil, Neil as well? Yeah, Neil helped me on the. I, it was, Shadow of California. The song wasn't going anywhere. Then Neil came over to the house. Neil Smith, right? And and, and I said, let me try try this thing and. He played this thing, and I said, "I'll give you half credit for the music." But it's it's nice that you guys. I saw you on the 40th at the Best Buy Theater in Times Square. It was nice to have you guys back. You did yeah, nice. Yeah. Thing. Oh, Alan, it was Alan's that was crazy. Show. That was a crazy show because yeah, I watched them play, and I, I thought, okay, well, it sounds like they sound these days. You know, I mean, they've got some great musicians. You know, really top-notch guys. Richie Castellano, the, I mean, Danny Miranda. Yeah, he's as good as anybody. Yeah. And well, at, yeah. At the, well, well that Danny wasn't there. It was Ka Chasm. It's Chasm, right. Chasm, who is just a monster bass player, singer. He does it all. And then you got Jules, who who is very. Uh, he's a school drummer. He, uh, you know, when I went out on tour with him, this blew my mind. He had transcribed all my drum parts, and he's oh. reading them. You know, in the but beginning. you went to England with them, correct? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so Jules is, I mean, he's great. So, you know, I think that it's the best band, at, you know, before, you know, since, since, since the original does. five. Right. And, but that night, so, okay, so that they play, and then the five of us get up that and play, nice. and it sounded exactly like nothing had happened. Like it was, it was exactly like, like we used that to was, sound. That was a, that was some night. Right? Yeah. I yeah. Really, I, it sounded like exactly like we used to sound. Top three all-time concerts. Yeah. Just yeah. to see you guys yeah. all together, yeah. everybody was happy. Yeah. So, well, but this, and that just shows you that you know when you have a band that's been together for a while, it really is a combination of all the people, you yeah. know, that makes it work. You know, because I've had a whole bunch of different bands since Blue Oyster Cult, and none of them sound like Blue Oyster Cult. Yeah. At all. No, I mean, people used to push you guys to the American Black Sabbath. I, I, I never really heard you guys as Black Sabbath. Like I said, I thought more of you as a hard we rock eagle. Quirky. Yeah. We kind of had, had guys, some quirky. Yeah, guys. yeah. We were much. We were way closer to Alice Cooper than Definitely. Yeah. Black Sabbath. I see that. Yeah. yeah. Now the fiftieth is barreling down. The Blue Oyster Cult fiftieth. Are you guys Ooh. in talks, or is there any kind of nothing yet? Nice. Nothing has been said. That's nothing. odd. That's, nothing. They, nothing. They just put and out I, really I good you album. know, I. You nice know, tour with everybody. Yeah, I, I think you know, some of the songs on that new album are really good. When, uh, when I was on tour with them in 2016, I said, you guys should make a record with this, this band. This band is so good. They deserve to, they, to put their stamp on that Blue Oyster Cult brand. And, and I said, and if you want me to do anything, just don't hesitate to ask. Yeah, well, good. so <laughs> then, then they're making the record, and <laughs> Joe was sending them songs, and I'm like, nope. No, I'm not good. Maybe I shouldn't. If they, if, if they ask me, if they ask me, I will do Something it. If they don't it. ask me, they then don't. you know. First of all, I. It was my idea for those guys to put their stamp on the brand. So, I wanted that to happen. That was more important than me participating. But if I could help them out, you in some still way, believe in Blue Oyster Cult, obviously. Well, I do. You yeah, do. yeah. 
That's yeah. good. Yeah, we we did something great, and uh, and I'm glad to see you know that other musicians are helping out too. So. So what are the plans for for you guys coming up these next couple of next Ooh. year? You well, got a lot of time to work. We on started this. our own record label. Yeah. Rock Heart Records, yep, okay. yep. which put out a Reimagine Us and Strange and Legends. Now, yeah. last year we got very, I, was, I said it before to you guys, we got very lucky. We got a Blue Oyster Cult album, we got a Joe solo album and an Albert solo album. It was like the trifecta, it was perfect. All three, it was like a triple Blue Oyster Cult album coming out with all of the, if you put them all together. Yeah. It was a fan's daydream. Well, there'll be more. That's yeah. what I hope. You think, yeah. think now, that was good. So what's There's coming up, be guys? More. Reimagine Us 2 is going to have it all all in one. Because I've got all, you know, well, everybody but Jules. I didn't have Jules. It just didn't work out that he could play. But but I have. They got Richie and, in it. I have Richie, Eric, and Don. Okay. And Joe. So. And Joe and Don both do songs that are mostly them. You know, Joe played almost all the instruments on his song, and Don played almost all the instruments on his, besides singing the singing lead and playing the <clears throat> guitar. Both of them did that. So, so it's going to be like, almost like a, another another thing, only it's not a triple, it's only a double. All right. So what's yeah. next for Joe? I am working on another solo album. All right. I, I, up, love the, I love the, where it's at. I, you know, it, 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 I'm just... Working on the logistics of it right now. Be well, out. It'll be out early in 22. Your fans will be there. I'll be right. waiting like I did with every other one. One last question, guys, okay. out of the grand bag. This is a friend of all of ours. Yes. Mm. This is a book that I use when I'm very down and depressed. Well, sarcasm, glory by a friend who passed away in January. John York. It has a nice little dedication yep. in here. This book is dedicated to the brothers Albert and Joe Bouchard. Musicians, composers, they awakened my artistic aspirations. As friends, they taught me by example that every single day in life is a blessing. Thank you, gentlemen. John really helped me out a lot. He introduced me yeah. to you guys. I miss him. Great guy. What do you guys yeah. think of this book? Oh, oh, fantastic. Yeah. I was, yeah. you know, he was writing another one. I'd like to see, you know, his I, well, brother. I'd like to see how far he got with it. Yeah. I, you know, his brother uh, is now in charge of his estate. Mm -hmm. So I would hope that, you know, people keep buying this book and- uh, Sarcasm and Glory. And yeah. uh, they put out the second one, uh, you know. Um, it's very, it's, he put it out on his own. Yeah. I remember yeah, when he put it Yeah, that's a great book. I, I'm, I'm my third time through it now. He was he was helping me. I was gonna do a book with me and my son about rock and roll, but you, with you guys, he helped me get, you guys wrote, my son wrote your letters and he talked to you at Blue Poop shows and you did interviews with him. They were very off the wall about yeah. it. It would be about what's your favorite instrument, yeah. what's your favorite color, what's your favorite food. It was, he was just, yeah. he was 10 years old when he was doing it. But it you guys great. were very good. I still have the emails back and forth. But John was working with the book. We were gonna put it out and he passed. He's, uh, that was a shock. That yeah. was a real shock. I was, as a matter of fact, his brother called me. I was supposed to meet him at nine o'clock that morning, that Monday morning at coffee with him on 8th Avenue. And, I, that's when I got the call. That uh -huh. I guess his brother was looking for his phone. It was on his uh, agenda. He, was, his, he made an appointment. Yeah. To put it uh, on his calendar. Yeah. Well, Said. Yeah. Yeah. He's sorely missed. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. That was. Thank uh, you. Thanks, for, wanna, thanks for coming down. We want to yeah. thank thank the. Uh, thanks the. Uh, Steve. Uh, Father Mike. Father Mike. Steve. And, uh, Gordon uh, here. Thanks for coming in. It's a long ride. Now we're going to go on a little tour of the church. Beautiful, but beautiful place. Just with the interview part. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. You guys Thank are great. You. Thank you, I Ken. appreciate your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Loved you guys since I was 10 years oh. old. Say farewell to the future.